Hi everyone, I'm Santiago from Kinova. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we will be learning how to install our Rust 2 drivers to interact with our Gen 3 arms. Uh, we will start from scratch, so we will be installing Rust 2 first, then we will build from source our driver, and we will finish up by running some of the basic examples just to make sure everything is okay. So uh, in order to install our drivers, we will need to be on Ubuntu 22.04 because we will be doing this on Rust 2 Humble Distribution. So one way we can make sure that we have the correct OS installed is just open up a terminal over here and just run this command. You should see this as output, just the, the release, it's 2204 and codename is Jammy. And if you see this, you're all good to go. So uh, let me close this for now. Now we can just open any browser you like. We will go ahead and search for the Rust2 uh, installation instructions. So you can go ahead and write Rust2 humble install instructions. It should be the first link. I will also put it in the description of this video. So if you don't find it, don't worry. And we will go ahead here and click on the Debian packages install, which is the recommended uh, method and we will be redirected over here. So basically what we need to do here is just copy and paste all of these steps over here. So open up uh, a terminal. Uh, usually this first step is not always necessary, uh, but it's a good practice just to make sure that your locale is set up correctly. So I will go ahead and do it as if it was not okay. Oops. So what you should see, uh, if you see UTF-8 over over here in the output, it's okay. But we will just go ahead and run it just for sanity. Just to make sure there's uh, no errors and whatnot. You will be asked for credentials. Just enter yours over here. Great. Just run these. This one. This one. And now you can verify as I have done before that your output says UTF-8. Now you're good to go. So let's clear this up and let's start uh, doing these instructions. So we can go ahead and run this. I'll just set up my screen like this, just for easy. Sorry about that. Okay, great. So this has been installed. Let's just go ahead and add this repository so that we have access to the Rust binaries. Just go ahead and click enter might take a bit, a couple of minutes, seconds. Now just continue with these instructions. Great. Oops. Sorry. Okay. Copy this. This one also, just setting up sources. Now we can run this command just to update our distribution. Cool, then upgrade. Just click uh, yes, enter yes. This might take some minutes.
great. So now that this is done, we will go ahead and install the desktop package of Rust. This will also install RVs and uh, some other things that we won't need to worry about. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this command. Always uh, select yes. This may take a couple of minutes again. Great, so now that we have installed Rust, we will also install these dev tools here, which include our compilers and other useful tools. So go ahead and copy and paste this command. Select yes, always. Great, so now that we have everything installed, um, you should when you you should see that when you run when you try running the rust2 command it will still say say that the command is not found this is because you will need uh, to source the rust distribution in order for your machine to recognize it uh, there's two ways you can go around this you can either run this source command every time that you open a new terminal so if you go ahead and copy and paste this command over here and then you run again the Rust command, now it will be recognized. That's one way you can do what I like to do uh, to make my life easier. You can just open up uh, your file uh, system over here in the home directory. We, we will go ahead and click on our keyboard Control H to show hidden files and we will search for this bash RC file that we will open. And we will just insert this same command inside this file. What this will do is that it will run automatically this command every time you open up a new terminal. So you won't be, you won't have to worry about this and uh, the Rusty command will always be recognized. So uh, just go to the end of the file and paste this command, save the file. Uh, now you can close this, close your terminal. And if you open a new one and just run the rest to command, it's automatically detected. So now we're done installing Rust 2. We will go ahead and uh, install our Rust 2 driver. Now to install the Rust 2 driver, we will need to go to the Kinova GitHub page. So let's go over here in our browser and just search for Kinova GitHub. I'll put the link for this in the description. So don't worry if you don't find it. Let's go over here and let's go to this Rust 2 uh, repo. Then we can scroll down to the building from source section and we'll go ahead and start these instructions. So first we need to install some Colcon extensions. Uh, Colcon is the build tool for Rust 2. So this will just uh, install a couple of extensions that will help us. So let's go ahead and run this. Great. Now let's go ahead and set our workspace. Uh, for this, you can use the default path that we're providing, but you can also set it uh, anywhere you want. For myself, I have created a tutorials uh, folder in my home page, so I'll just change the path for this, but you can go ahead and actually put whatever you wish. Just make sure to change the path. I'm setting the variable here and now I'm actually creating my workspace folder. Great. So let's clear this up. And if I change the directories into this workspace, we will actually see that our folder is created. And for now, this is just an empty folder, but let's continue the steps. So now we can actually clone our repository. So let's go ahead and do this command. This will clone uh, the Rust2 driver. Great. Now we will pull some, uh, some other repos that our driver needs. So, uh, repos that we need for simulation or for the grippers, um, 
for control for the control nodes. So these these commands, it's it's their job to pull all of these dependencies over here. So let's rush. Let's run this first one. It can take a couple of minutes. Uh, let's go ahead for the second one. Great. Now, since we're going to be running the simulation examples, we also need uh, to import this, these simulation repos. So let's go ahead and do this. Great. So now this is done. So for now, we will ignore this move it instruction. Uh, move it is not in the scope of this tutorial, but we will eventually release new videos on how to use move it with our, our Rust 2 driver. So for now, we'll skip this and then we can run this rustdep command, which will install the binaries needed for all of these packages over here. So we will probably get asked to initialize this rustdep command since it's the first time we'll use it. Great, so now that our dependencies are installed, you should see this message over here saying everything is okay. So we were not asked to update the Rust dep command, but it sometimes you will need to do it. Uh, if, if you do, uh, the message will say uh, exactly what command you should run. So uh, just follow those instructions if you ever get this message. So now that everything, uh, all of the dependencies are installed, we can go ahead and build our driver. So we'll go over here and run this com this command. Um, we will actually run this command instead because uh, Calcon by default uses as much threads as it can to build uh, your your, uh, your the driver. And since we have a lot of packages to build, it sometimes can slow down your machine. I have found that uh, limiting the number of threads to three uh, works for me. Uh, you can experiment with this. Uh, so if you see any slowing down uh, on your machine wi while building our driver, just uh, go ahead and run this command. This will take a couple of minutes because we have to build a total of 63 packages. So just be, uh, just be patient. So now that our package is built, we can go ahead and run the examples. So just scroll down to the usage section over here. Um, before we run this, I will mention that the examples used by default, the Gen 3 7 DUF configuration, but if your ARM uh, has a different configuration, you can always change uh, the arguments uh, in these commands to reflect your setup. You can see all of the possible arguments if you go to the bring up folder over here, then you go to the launch folder, and you can see all of our launch files here. So if you open one of them, you can see all of the possible arguments and the default values and, and a description. So uh, you can customize your commands over here, uh, depending on your setup. So if we go back to our instructions, uh, here in the usage section, we will first here in our terminal source our workspace. So now that we have built the driver, we need to tell our terminal to take into account uh, this new build and to use the changes. So let's go ahead and source this setup file that's inside the install folder. Great, so now that it's done, we can run the first example, which will be this one over here. It will show us the arm and we will have a small GUI to control each joint. So let's paste the command and run it. We should see an Arvis window uh, pop over here and this GUI to control each joint. So you can move uh, each joint with these sliders, joint 4, joint 5, joint 6, joint 7. Uh, you can also recenter your arm to the initial position and you can randomize some positions for the joints. This is just a visualizer to see uh, everything working fine. So 
let's go ahead and stop this example and now we will be running the simulation example in ignition which is a different version of uh, gazebo uh, so let's go ahead over here and run this command i don't need to source my uh, workspace since i've already done it in this terminal uh, before the uh, the previous example but if you want to run the example in a separate terminal don't forget to run the source uh, command before so since i don't need it i will just paste my next command here and press enter and now you should see a gazebo window open with our arm in a candle position i will just zoom over here you can see the arm great so now we have all of the drivers running inside this terminal but if i want to uh, send an actual command to this virtual arm i will need to open a new terminal uh, let's source again like i mentioned oops let me move this here so you can see it so like i mentioned we need to source our workspace since we're in a new terminal so let's do this again we source it and now we can go back to our instructions and copy this command here that will publish uh, some joint commands to our arm so if i paste it and then i can specify any command i wish to any joint so just for this example i'll give a random uh, 0.57 radian command to the joint number four of our arm so if i run this we should see the arm start moving over here that's great and we can also interact with the gripper uh, in this setup so if you go back to our instructions here and scroll down a bit farther you will find this command over here to uh, interact with the gripper so if i go back to my window here i have already sourced my terminal so i can just run the command let me just zoom on the gripper a bit sorry okay over here and if i run it you will see the gripper opening so that's about it for this tutorial. Thank you for following and see you in the next video.